Good morning and welcome to my hobby bench. On the table today I've got this nice little Magnum uh, FS30. I think the official designation is XLS 30 RFS. <clears throat> anyway, 34 stroke engine. And what I've got it on the table for is I've done a run video with it and it really sounded like it needs bearings. So it's uh, probably going to be pretty nasty looking. I mean it's not, it doesn't have a bunch of carbon on it. What it has on it, I think I might need to just zoom out here just a hair. Back to the engine here. So I'm going to begin by just disassembling all the stuff on here. I think I was talking about before that text message came in that I took. Later I was talking about the exhaust. It doesn't really have any carbon buildup on it. It just looks corroded looking. So I'll probably just um, oil that up and use some emery cloth on it. Sand it down more or less. Probably more than less. Now when I took this carb off the first time this gasket remained intact. And it was a pretty thick gasket so it should be safe. I forgot I've got this little slotted screw holding that thing on there. There's that gasket. There's that little slotted screw that kind of holds the carb onto the body. There's that thick, really thick gasket. I don't think I'm going to be needing that anymore. I don't need that. I don't need this. Let's get all this stuff out of the way that I don't need. I'm just kind of dropping all these parts into a little bin here for cleaning. Now I am still trying to evaluate ways to clean engines. I just tried some 50-50 pre-mixed diluted ethylene glycol coolant in an ultrasonic cleaner, not in a crock pot. I don't have a crock pot that I'm going to dedicate to that, nor do I have 12 hours to do that. So I turned it up pretty high temperature, let it sit for 30 to 45 minutes with ultrasonic vibrations going in. It did nothing to the engine that I was cleaning at all. It was an OSH60. OS Max H60 engine. Did nothing to it, so that method for my means sucks. I'm not planning on ever using that crap again because I'm doing cleanings in my apartment here, which means that Sasha is going to be around and I cannot risk anything hazardous that could, she could potentially get engaged with or anything like that. So now I know I had an issue with this screw last time it was starting to wall her out so I can't recall if I used a one of these ground drivers must have been what I used you may say, well, why don't you use those all the time? Well, they're definitely more precision cut. But when you're breaking something loose, you really need that extra lever arm that a straight handle device really can't, can't provide. Now, I am going to replace the bearings on this engine. I am not replacing the camshaft bearings. I don't typically do that. I've done it once or twice before and never saw any benefit change in anything. I've never ever heard of nor seen camshaft bearings go bad. They can look gross and nasty, but they, they'll clean up. So let's just continue on here with the head. Now, I think this is such a, a low time engine that I don't really know that it's going to be necessary for me to drop the valves on this. We'll take a look underside, underside of the head and see. 
I, I, it's just such a low time engine that I don't believe that there's really going to be any need for me to drop the valves on this. I'll just throw everything in the cleaner as it is. And like I said, I'm still evaluating cleaning options. Now, Mike, a friend of mine, had given me some Zep 15282 powder cleaner. Uh, and I used that in, in a video earlier. Um, Seems to work fine, but I mean, it's not available. It's out of stock. They sell it by a huge drum. He gave me about, I don't know, enough to do two or three, four engines, maybe. So that's really not a viable option. I mean, it seems to work all right, but you know, if it's not available and they only sell it by the drum, what the hell? I'm not going to go buying a drum of it and wait for it to become available. Yeah, so see. So now maybe I can zoom in a bit more. See, there's really no real need in me removing the valves on this. Especially since I pretty much just cleaned off what little carbon <coughs> was on there. And the springs are fine. So there's no point in, in doing that. Now the kicker is, how willing is this sleeve to come out? I did just purchase some hardwood dowels, but I think they're down in the garage, so I may be kind of at an impasse here until I can get this sleeve out. I don't know that this thing is going to have enough room here to just pop off or not. So I'm probably going to have to get the sleeve out before that's going to come off of there. So and my heat gun, everything is downstairs. So what I'm going to end up doing is I'll probably put a little bit of oil down in here and try to get it to go between or in that gap where the sleeve meets the crankcase. And I'd like to try to Finagle that thing out. That's a pretty strong magnet. The cam gear is going to have to come out, obviously, too. Maybe I can shove one of these tappets up. There we go, there's one of them. There's a tap it out. Now this thing should come out. Hmm. Anyway, so what I was saying is I'll have to go out there <coughs> Maybe what I'll do is I'll grab a uh, one of those new hardwood dowels and kind of catch it on the lip there and either tap it or try to push on it, get this thing super hot and push that sleeve out. That's really the only way I'm going to be able to do that. I can just barely see, if I get the connecting rod, the piston in the right spot, I can just barely see the edge there. I don't think I'm going to be able to show you the edge of the sleeve so I could get the dowel rod in there like this and just tap it. But this thing's going to have to be really hot and of course this thing is going to have to come out at some point too. It's really wanting to stay in there. I wonder if I don't have a little set of needle nose pliers to try to grab onto that thing with. I don't know if I can just jiggle it out, but I may have to just kind of grab it with some pliers and pull it out. There's really, there's no reason why it shouldn't just come right out. There's just the, the friction of it being inserted in that little bearing over here is what's holding it in place. It's just a little friction fit, maybe a little bit of suction um, holding that in place. But anyway, so the rest of this, unfortunately, is going to have to take place off camera. I haven't figured out exactly how, what I'm thinking about doing with this engine as far as cleaning solution is. 
I'm thinking about using some of the LA's Totally Awesome cleaner that I've got in the ultrasonic cleaner, but not using heat. Running it at ambient only, just to see what happens. Unfortunately, there's not a whole lot here that's super dirty. So I won't really be able to tell if it, I'll be able to tell if it discolors the engine, but I won't be able to tell. I mean, I know LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner cleans up the engine really well provided it doesn't discolor it. So I'm hoping that heat is the thing that was the, the catalytic reaction that was causing this. And I put it in there just for a very short time, no more than 15 minutes, no heat. LA's Totally Awesome Cleaner, and just enough to clean all of this off. Heck, for that matter, as clean as this engine is, I probably could just clean it all by hand with a toothbrush, but I need to, sac I need to, I won't say sacrifice, but I need to experiment with cleaning engines in a solution that's not going to discolor them because I've opened up the doors for servicing engines for others again, and one of the services and things I like to do with an engine is clean it have it look nice so and without a means to clean an engine without damaging the finish it kind of sucks to do that so we'll just have to see but anyway um, we'll pick this up again after the parts are cleaned more than likely okay so I don't know what the hell to do I got this engine disassembled I took it out in the garage pulled the sleeve out <clears throat> you don't have to extract the wrist pin on this even though it's a surpass style engine these smaller ones, there's enough clearance. Either that or there's enough movement here to enable that to come out. I'm not sure. But so I just did a cleaning of just these parts in totally in LA's totally awesome cleaner, highly diluted, and no heat whatsoever. And it's still less than 10 minutes and it discolored the damn case. So this leads me to be like, what the hell am I supposed to do? I don't know how I'm supposed to clean other people's engines. I don't know what I'm supposed to use to be able to clean other people's engines. I haven't, I just dried these off. I haven't oiled them up yet. Now, this cleaner cleans really damn well. I mean, it really, this piston had some uh, caramelization on the sides and it's really clean. It, I mean, it cleans well. It's just, it's freaking discoloring the aluminum parts. Is it a factor of the type of aluminum? I mean, this bearing here was really pretty gum gummed up and it looks really nice now. So, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the hell I'm supposed to do here. I really don't. Um, this just sucks. So I've tried a couple of different means to clean engines. I haven't had any luck with the first one. Uh, what did I use? That ethylene glycol in the ultrasonic didn't even clean the engine. Didn't discolor it, but it certainly didn't clean the engine. And now that stuff, the ZEP formula 15282 that Mike gave me cleans engines really well. But I mean, if it's not available or it's only available in huge tubs when it is available, that's not an option. So... I don't know what the hell to do. All I know is I'm going to just oil all these parts up now and get some bearings on order and this engine is going to sit in this parts bin all oiled up until I get fresh bearings on hand. Here's the bearings. They don't seem too bad but they're out. They're going to get replaced. Yeah, they're noisy. So anyway, that's, that's this. I don't know what the hell to do.